Sporting Journal Radio, presented by Onyx. All right, this is Sporting Journal Radio. I'm Brett Amundsen, along with Dan Amundsen and David Eckhart. And Joe Henry from Lake of the Woods Tourism joins us right now. Joe, how's it going? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. And you? Not too bad. You are uh, mobile today. You're obviously parked there in your vehicle, but you're in your vehicle right now. Yes, yes. You know, actually, uh, I have the great privilege of speaking to the Iowa Great Lakes Fishing Club tonight. Uh, they had their annual meeting. And uh, so heading down to Iowa and uh, going to be able to, to chat with those guys and it's going to be fun. I mean, what a what a great group these guys, uh, guys and gals are. Very, very uh, um, strong club. Very, uh, very avid anglers. And of course, you know they, they fish that Iowa area of theirs, the Great Lakes, but they also you know, go other places. So tonight we're going to be really featuring Lake of the Woods and giving kind of a rundown, uh, season by season, multi species. And then I'm going to do a little uh, uh, focus one little segment on pulling spinners, which you know pulling crawler harnesses, as you guys know, is effective every, everywhere you go for walleye. I'm gonna vertical jig with some. Uh, You're gonna what? I'm gonna vertical jig with some uh, crawler harnesses next time I go to Lake of the Woods, Joe. What? Well, you know what? That's not a, nope. That's not a bad technique if you're on the rainy river, <laughs> because uh, that current will make those uh, blades spin. There you go. And actually, that's <laughs> for some of the locals. And that current's going about the perfect speed too. That oh, it is. Half, you can just yeah. take that. You just take and you just bounce that. You can have a little bit of a angle on your, you know, with your weight and the current. But basically, you just, uh, you know, let that thing bounce off the bottom. That spinner's constantly spinning. And sometimes they put a crawl in there. More often than not, they'll put a, uh, you know, a, a emerald shiner on each hook. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, Joe. I mean, I, I feel like just about anything we've, we've brought up there in the wintertime, we've, we catch fish on. I feel like, you know, it depends on the fish. But a lot of times, especially those, uh, those saugers, I feel like they can be so aggressive, they'll hit on just about anything up there. Well, it, it depends, right? I mean, there's times where it feels like you could stick a, literally a hot dog, a hot dog down there and they'd eat it, you know? And, and then there's other times where you watch them go through on your electronics and you're like, what the heck? You keep rotating, rotating, rotating. It's really hard to get them to go. But the, those are normally the times when it's, you know, 25 or 30 below. Maybe a, a, a front just went through. But, but again, that's why it's fishing. And you got to figure them out. That's, your, that's part of the, to me, that's part of the fun. It's a little bit of a chess match trying to figure out what's going what's gonna to get some fish to roll. Well, it was fun seeing you. I know you just had one night with us. You've been on the road quite a bit. We've, we've all been on the road. It's, it's sports show season. I know you went to Chicago right before we went to Chicago and then up to up to Lake of the Woods. I feel like we've, we've been going to the same places just at different times, although we, we, need, don't, we don't have a trip to Iowa planned. Not yet. Not, not yet. <laughs> exactly. Joe's got some long rods in the back of his truck. I kind of want to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. No, I'll tell you, it's, it's, you know, as, I, as I'm driving today, guys, you know, it's uh, – that sun is getting warm, and uh, it's it's mid to high 30s. It's February. February. I mean, it's not going to be long, and we're going to be talking. Okay, Joe, I hear that there's some people starting to push out onto the rainy river. I mean, I'm telling you, it's going to be, you know, who knows? Is it going to be four weeks or what's going to be? But, man, I'll tell you, it's going to be, you know. It's coming quick. I, I shouldn't say four weeks. That would be, that would be early. That would be, that would be a little bit early in March. But, you know, it's not going to be that much further down the road, I should say. You know, normally – Normally, towards the end of March is when you start hearing stuff about the Rainy River. And, you know, with, uh, well, time will tell. With, with the weather we've had this year not being as cold as it normally is, um, you know, will the river pop open sooner? You know, there's so many criteria that go into that. Well, we're planning our Rainy River tournament uh, right now. It's going to be April 11th and 12th on the Rainy River. We'll be based out of Riverbend Resort. And, uh, Joe, can you just... Uh, you know, we're kind of hoping that all the accesses will be open this year, but if you can, can you just dam up like the little fork and the big fork just until after we're done, just to make sure, is there a way we can get that done? Just keep the river from uh, mud- muddying up a little bit. Yeah. You know what? I'll, uh, I'll get, uh, I'll get connected with the IGC, the internet international joint commission. And uh, okay, good. just see good. if they can <laughs> get into the rules for them and just change uh, the, the multi-nation bylaws, you know? Oh yeah. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Yeah. <laughs> well, well well, it was fun last year. I know we were fishing in that snowstorm. Hopefully we have a little bit better weather for it this year. But, uh, you know, ice fishing is what we're talking about right now. How's fishing been up at Lake of the Woods? You know, fishing, fishing's been, been okay. I mean, it, it's like this. It's like if you get in one of those situations where it's 25 or 30 below, things have been a little bit tough. If you get in an area where everything is spread out on that open mud and, you know, the schools aren't as tight and stuff, you're picking and fishing every single fish. Most people are catching fish. Most people are catching enough for a fish fry. 
some people are catching some nice slots and some even trophy walleyes. Um, other people, they're like, man, I don't know what you guys are talking about. We smoke the walleyes. We're putting nice fish back. It really kind of depends. And, uh, but it's, it is February. And, uh, you know, you, you just, you have to have the right expectation, right? I mean, you know, you're, you're going to sort through some fish, big ones, little ones. Hopefully you get the big ones. You're going to sort the little ones most likely. And that'll be a combination of walleyes and saugers. Then you pick out your eaters and then, uh, you know, hopefully you're running some nice fish when you're up there. Well, here's what I noticed when we were up there last week was, the saugers generally played like they were they pretty much committed most of the time i mean they they the bite window would kind of open and close but for the most part if you had a real active fish that was chasing it was generally a sauger then we'd have fish that would chase but wouldn't always bite and sometimes we'd work them and work them and work them maybe ch- try a different lure and we'd work them and work them and work them those would be walleyes they'd just be smaller walleyes and actually our our jigging uh, rods were out producing our dead sticks but then we'd notice a big mark would come through and they either wouldn't show any interest or they would chase just, they would just come up just a little bit and then just keep on trucking. So I feel like that's where that dead stick can really play a bigger role or maybe a, uh, a more subtle presentation. Maybe that's what you need to kind of trick those bigger fish up there right now. Well, that's also why, that's also why you use the one, two punch. You use a jigging line and you also use a dead stick because you let those fish tell you what they want. And every day, every hour, Quite honestly, it can be different. I think the other thing, too, is when those fish chase you and chase you around and they don't commit, I think some of those could be two of these. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I did catch one. And I know a few guys caught some as well, too. Uh, but sometimes, yeah, they come up and and uh, um, Alex was telling us that a lot of times that they come up and if you jigged a little bit and it really spooked them, that a lot of times that was a tula bee that you, you spooked out of there. Yeah, and the other thing I'd say, too, is, you know, when fishing gets tough, like if you're seeing fish come through and you're having a hard time catching them, as a rule, do two things. One, put on something like a, you know, a, a lipless crankbait, like a live target or a Rapala rip and wrap, or they're, you know, every brand, there's different brands, but they're, they're, they're an aggressive bait. They got vibration and rattles in them. That'll oftentimes pull fish in. Sometimes it'll get a reaction strike. The second thing I would encourage you to do is downsize your presentation. Go to a really small jigging spool with a small minnow header, small piece of tail. Uh, go to a plain hook on your dead stick. Try to put a small minnow on there. I've even seen anglers use dead minnows and just hang those dead minnows, uh, you know, a foot and a half, two feet off the bottom, make that, that walleye or sauger come off the bottom and grab it and come back down. And uh, those, those are some techniques that will catch you some more fish. And, you know, if, if you get dialed in on those fish and it's a tough day, but you catch those, you know, four, five, six extra bites, and all of a sudden you're filling that tail. Real quick, Joe, before we let you go this week, we have to do a little bit of fish trivia with Joe Henry, ladies and gentlemen, from Lake of the Woods Tourism, along with David Eckhart and Dad Emmonson here. We're going to talk about saugers here on the show. We have three questions, ladies and gentlemen, and some of you uh, anglers that fish Lake of the Woods a lot will probably know the answer to these, but we might teach somebody a thing or two about saugers. Number one, what is, the, what is not a difference between a walleye and a sauger? What is not a difference... Uh, I think I what it, what are differences? I think I wrote this you question. Remember how to read? <laughs> what are differences? Uh, a white spot on the tail of a walleye. B black spots on a dorsal fin of a sauger. C there's only six teeth in saugers. Or D one of their names starts with the letter S. <laughs> Thank you very much. Do you, do you, do you want me to answer that? Uh, you can add, uh, Joe. You obviously don't know the answer to this, so <laughs> this is this guy giving a seminar here later today. Yeah. So, uh, David, do you want to try guessing first? I'm gonna go with A and B. Okay. So I I just wrote that question oh. wrong. So I was looking All for right. C. Well, then C. Yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> question number two: What age do saugers start to reproduce? Is it A six months? Is it B one year? Is it C two to five years? Or is it D twenty five years? Dan, do you want? I'll answer. I don't. Again, I just I I can't multitask very well. I wasn't listening. <laughs> so uh, B, one year. David, sure. uh, the two to five. Two to two to five years. Joe, C, two to five. Two to five. Two to five years is correct, ladies and gentlemen. That is correct. Saugers start to reproduce. They reach sexual maturity age two to five which so did i thank you very much question number three i'm i mean i still haven't really (laughs) question number three what is the size of the typical sauger what is the size and this is all from wikipedia and i believe everything i read on wikipedia (laughs) what is the size of the typical sauger is it a two to three pounds 
Is it B, 4 to 5 pounds? Is it C, 11 to 14 ounces? Or is it D, 12 to 15 pounds? Dan, did you listen to that one? Barely. Because <laughs> this is actually interesting because there's like the first, it's a way longer story than I want to get into, but my experience with Sauger is so different than everywhere else. But, oh, it's got to be A or, or C. Two to three pounds, David? Or C. Or C, remember. 11 to 14 yeah, ounces? I'm, putting two uh, I'm going to go in. C. So I guess now, Dan, is that what they're is that what they're teaching in school these days? You can just answer twice, two Everybody different answers. Wins. Yeah. Everyone gets a, tr- a prize. Multiple Joe? choices. <laughs> See, That's what I thought. See, eleven to fourteen ounces is correct, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. The size of the typical sauger, eleven to fourteen ounces. Joe Henry, if people want to catch saugers and walleyes this winter up at Lake of the Woods, where should they go for more info? Well, I'll tell you what, and you can do it through March thirty first. Uh, check out our website, and that is Lake of the Woods. Amen.com. Hear more at SportingJournalRadio.com or wherever you get podcasts. Come ice fish the famous waters of Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, the walleye capital of the world. Experience full service resorts featuring heated fish houses, ice transportation, meal plans, and sleeper house options. From the northwest angle to the south shore, Rainy River and Baudette, the Midwest's number one ice fishing destination. Walleye, Sauger, Perch, and Northern Pike, Minnesota's Lake of the Woods, best fishing anywhere. For more information, log on to lakeofthewoodsmn.com.